Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today I will be welcoming back my good friend Diane Franklin, and we are going to be talking about <clears throat> her 1984 cult film Second Time Lucky, a movie we haven't talked about on the show before, and the reason why I specifically want to bring it up is because uh, the director of the movie, Michael Anderson, passed away about two months ago, and I wanted to uh, do a tribute to him because he directed some classic movies, Around the World in 80 Days, 1984, Logan's Run, Orca, I mean, so many great movies, and um, we're going to talk about it today. I hope everyone had a um, happy 4th of July. I know I did. I had some really good barbecue, and it was a lot of fun. Um, it's a weird time in our country right now, but I know things will get better, and I can already see it on the horizon already getting better. So, yeah, um, so, that'd be great to talk to Diane today, it's been a few months since the last time we talked, and, um, yeah, so, here is my new interview with my good friend, Diane Franklin. Hey, Diane. Welcome back to the show. Hey, I am so happy to be here on the Thank you for inviting me again. Oh, of course. I love having you on. So, uh, Great. How are Can you? Can you hear me clearly? I'm sorry? Can you hear me clearly? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you clearly. Okay, great. Okay, cool. So, how are you and how was your 4th of July? Oh, you know, I think it was one of the best 4th of July's I've ever had because I went to three separate uh, 4th of July uh, fire uh, engineer shows. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I saw one at the Santa Monica College, which is a great show. And um, and then I did, um, we went to uh, the beach and we saw the fireworks at the, sh uh, the beach. And then I also saw them... Um, in um, Thousand Oaks and Westlake, and it was wonderful. There, it was amazing. So I gotta say, like, uh, I think it's one of the most entertaining Fourth of July's I've ever had. That way. Oh, nice! I didn't go to watch any fireworks, but I heard them around around ten o'clock. They were mm -hmm. just they were just exploding outside my window. I'll tell you. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. You know, I, I was wondering. I do have to say, I was wondering when it became the Fourth of July. How how it was going to have, like, hope, hope. I was hoping that everything would stay peaceful in the world. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I thought, mm, sometimes these holidays bring out some people who are not that crazy about these holidays. So I'm glad that everybody's okay. That was my main thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So a few months ago, uh, we lost the great director, Michael Anderson, who you got to work with yeah. later in his career with Second Time Lucky. Um, let's get into that movie first. So how did that great role of Eve come to you? Well, um, first when I, uh, first of all, it, most people, if you have not seen this movie, which most people have not, um, you, ha you know, this movie is, you have to be a real, real cinephile to know this movie. Um, yep. It is, most, it is shot, and it is so beautiful, this film, Second Time Lucky. I mean, I, I, I took the role because the script, to me, um, just, I was, I was able to play so many different characters in it. And it is the story of Adam and Eve. Um, mm -hmm. It starts in the, essentially, it starts at a party, but then it goes to the Garden of Eden. And it's basically Adam and Eve throughout time. So it's sort of like time travel um, to um, Roman time, and then it goes to... Um, I think it's, uh, um, I think it's World War, oh, it's Roman time, and then it goes to World War One, and it goes to, um, uh, trying to think, um, I think it's, I'm now remembering, um, it goes to the, oh, the 20s, the Roaring 20s, and then it goes to uh, the, I think, and then it even goes to the future. It's like an amazing, fun, film. Um, yeah. And what happened was I had finished, uh, it was before Better Off Dead, I think I finished Amityville. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, okay, so now like, I, I, my goal was either to do big parts 
or to stretch myself as an actress or to work with um, better people. And after I did Amityville, I actually was, uh, I, I had the opportunity to audition for Amadeus, the film Amadeus. Yep. And that film was, um, like, I mean, it was a huge film, and, and, and it was a very, um, I'm backtracking to the, your question, but um, it's okay. essentially what happened was, I was like, so way, way back, uh, <laughs> I actually had to do, I did a movie that we called Summer Girl, and I was in a plane going to shoot Summer Girl after doing Amityville, and, or maybe it was a little later, and I'm sitting next to this gentleman named F. Murray Abraham, who was actually Saliari in, in Amity, um, in, in Amadeus. Um, Amadeus, right. right. And he won an Oscar for this film. I mean, it's amazing. So he's sitting next to me and he's got the script of Amadeus and he says, you know, there's a girl in here. My gosh, you know, it's part that you could play. And I was like, oh, that's really nice, thank you. But, you know, I'm, I'm on my way to do another movie. And he was just finished doing Scarface. So it was kind of very cool. And so, so we were kind of becoming friends with each other. And then, say, a half a year goes by and I get this call um, to go and audition for Amadeus in New York and they flew me to New York and I auditioned for it and then I screen tested. I met um, F. F. Marie, um, I met um, um, Milos Sparman, the director who directed Cuckoo's Nest and went to the Cuckoo's Nest and uh, Saul Dance and uh, produced the Saul Dance. And anyway, so then I went to the audition and they said, oh, we're going to fly you to Prague. And so they flew uh, myself and Elizabeth Marriage, the only two actresses that were able to audition for this film, um, and flew us in mid-production while they were in the middle of shooting that film to uh, Czechoslovakia, to Prague, to audition and to screen test and to do every single scene in the film in costume, with makeup, with... Um, uh, um, with um, I'm doing a lot of um, uh, uh, with F. Murray Abraham and also um, uh, the gentleman who played Mozart. Now his name is Gates. Tom Holtz. Um, so uh, Tommy Holtz. Tom Holtz. Yeah. So we so we get there, and I'm thinking this whole time that F. Murray Abraham perhaps put in a good word for me, um, but he didn't say anything. But he like was very happy to see me when we got there. So that was hilarious. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So. I, so I finished, so I go for the audition, and this was the, I mean, this was the hardest audition I've been, in my entire life that I've ever gone to, and I can't even mm -hmm. imagine, you know, I mean, actresses have harrowing stories about the audition process, but this one was unbelievable. It was just so heart-wrenching and difficult, but, you know, at the same time, exciting, and, you know, just, we had to just, like, do every single scene. It was a lot of pressure, but it was magical and incredible. Um, and I even have the the, um, I have a copy of the uh, interview, which was uh, the audition, the uh, screen test, which wow. at some point I will probably show. But um, regardless, I so I got this. So having done all of this, after that film ended, uh, that audition, I didn't get it. So I flew back, and I was heartbroken, but at the same time, I was like, okay, whatever's best for the film. It's kind of interesting. I mean, my reaction, I was so professional. I'd worked so long in the business that I was kind of at a point where that film could have kickstarted me into like an A-list film, but at the same time, you know, there's so many things that would have happened in my life that wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have, you know, uh, done Better Off Dead and Bill of Tess, and I wouldn't have, like, had got an A, you know, like, I mean, like, didn't, you know, I had the experiences where I, um, I met my husband and I and, um, had kids, and so, I mean, I think it kickstarted so many things that were wonderful in my life. Um, but I also wanted to work, you know, I really wanted yeah. to, you know, do a lead in the film, and I wanted really to do a period piece. That was really important to me. So, there comes Michael Anderson, and Michael Anderson uh, calls me in for an audition, and I didn't know who he was, but I did know that he was, I didn't know that he did Around the World in 80 Days, but I didn't know any background on him. On, all I knew was, was that I got this script, and here I was to play Eve, in all these different roles throughout time. Right. And to me, that was awesome. Like, I just went, I want to play this character. I would love to play this role. So, I then I heard, okay, well, we were going to have um, Sir Robert Helfman was in it, and we had, like, established actors who were really quite amazing. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, 
in fact, um, I think that, I'm trying to think if it was, not John Gilbert, but another um, amazing actor. There were actors who like were set to do the film, and then they fell out, and uh, so it was kind of interesting. It was like a lot of wonderful English actors involved, because I think they loved Michael. Michael was just an amazing director, and a lovely, lovely person. So... When I got to the audition, I went in. It was just me. There was nobody else. And, uh, I mean, it wasn't even like a waiting room. It was like a special meeting. And I met him, and they said, oh, you know, we would really love for you to do this film. And they really were very, um, they were very excited about having me on the project. And Michael was, like, so lovely and such a gentleman. And I really had to say that I, I knew that there was a lot of nudity in the film, but the way he was, as a director, I knew that he would handle it well, uh-huh. and he was going to, hmm. you know, treat it with dignity, and, um, you know, he just was a, you know, just a lovely man. So I thought, okay, you know, I would really love to do the role, and I, this gentleman seems excited, and frankly, at the beginning of the project, uh, there was a lot of high hopes for the film, originally, and uh, huh. then, obviously, you know, going to New Zealand and traveling was very exciting, and... Uh, and I just thought it was, it showed a lot of range. So it was obviously a comedy, um, and it was a sort of, if you've never seen it, it is a combination of sort of like a, uh, who's the English comedian? Like, um, oh my gosh. Benny Hill? Uh, like a Benny Hill, yeah. Kind of like a Benny Hill uh, meets Gone with the Wind, as I, I always compare it to. It's this beautiful film, but it's got this kind of uh, sort of tongue-in-cheek English humor and so mm-hmm. um titillating but at the same time kind of uh maybe and the sound effects kind of with it so uh it, the tone again was very mixed but of course i didn't know that at the beginning when we did the film um i just thought you know we we're shooting in these incredible locations with this beautiful um these beautiful costumes and incredible hair and makeup and uh so regardless we shot the film and uh it was it was so much fun to shoot with Michael. And I have to tell you that what a great experience for me as an actress because he was, uh, Michael was the kind of guy who, if there was a problem, he was very gentle and caring with his actors and he wasn't somebody to just uh, push his, his actors around. He was sort of like, let's try it, feel it out, and then see what works. And then he would make his little suggestions to it. But he was very uh, respectful. And That's good. Fun. And we laughed a lot when we did the shit filming. And um, I think he really, he enjoyed it working as well. He totally did. And Roger and I, uh, at the beginning, uh, we weren't, we didn't really know each other that well. And I think that at the beginning, we weren't that connected. But as the film went on, we got more and more connected as, as a, you know, in the relationship of a couple. Um, and I think he was helpful in that. He knew how to work with Roger. And then, and you know, I came in and um, it was, it was just a wonderful working with him. He was great. So there's a long answer to your, <laughs> to your question about it. Oh, and one more little tidbit. Uh-huh. Originally, I thought, you know, I was involved in it, but originally it was supposed to be Bo Derek playing my role. Oh. You, I mean, obviously, she is so different than I am. And it was kind of amazing because the film was originally called The Apple and the Pear. Mm. And I wound up playing this role that, I mean, Bo Derek was one of the, you know, she's one of the most beautiful women that ever lived. And it was kind of interesting with me being cast because I was sort of, I, you know, much. I look more, I look younger, but like more childlike, more uh, innocent, just a different quality than she had. She was, you know, sort of this, I don't know, how would you describe her? She's, Bo Derek is. Bo Derek is voluptuous, buxom. Right. You know. Buxom and just, you know, sexual, but not in a um, sweet way. She's, she's, um. More womanly. I don't know. I don't know. It, it just were very different types. So I thought it was kind of interesting that they they wound up choosing me. Mm-hmm. And so there was, that was a kind of an interesting little background on it. But it, it wound up falling through for them, and so that's why they wound up uh, taking it and having me be in it. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I saw the movie once years ago, and I thought it was pretty cool. 
and I didn't see it again. It's been quite a while, but I thought you were great in it. You you would I think you were a much better choice than Bo Derek would have been. And um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I think that for me it was um, I took advantage of it in the acting realm where I try to use body and voice and create different characters in every single thing. And that actually was the precursor or what helped me get the confidence up to do better off death because I play a French um, nurse in it. And so yeah. I got my French accent down and um, I think that that movie helped me, you know, explore different characters. So that when I did my better off dead audition, I just went in as me. I mean, I just was like, I'm ready to go. And I've got you stuff like this with me. I'm, I am going to stop lunch with you. And, uh, and Savage was like, what is going on? I didn't know you could do that. So, um, he was, I think, thinking about more playing Beth. Yeah. So I think when you're an actress, you want to go and, you know, you take, I've always been somebody who I was always more concerned about the characters that I played and then necessarily uh, if it was an A-list project. Because to me, if you want, if you're connected, you're connected, and you can make right. anything. You can bring it up. But you know, I know now that you know, if a film, if it's an A-list film, and you have a tiny part in an A-list film, all of a sudden, everybody goes, "Oh my gosh, you were in that film," you know, yeah. um, and you're a part of it. Uh, in, in that case, I wish I had done sort of a, either a Star Trek or Star Wars. I ventured into that world, but uh, from a personal acting standpoint. Um, it was, there's nothing more gratifying than doing scenes and playing bigger parts and experimenting and, you know, just being, and being able to work with wonderful, you know, directors who just give you the opportunity to show you, your talents and what you can do. Right. Certainly. And, uh, you got to co-star with, um, Roger Wilson, who was best known for the Porky's movies. It's funny. He did more, he did. He did Porky's in the same year that you did The Last American Virgin. Yes, you know, somebody, that's another thing, like when we came on and, and on it, you know, they would say, oh, it's Diane from Last American Virgin and uh, Roger from Porky's. And that was the film, those are the films that were, that they knew, you know, of us coming out. Mm -hmm. But um, it's kind of funny because like, obviously that probably made people go, oh, well, there's something sexual going on in here. And so you probably ate it, you know, ate it in, you have any uh, concern about being naked again? Uh, that was my, it's interesting I have, that was my third film and that was it. So it threw you the charm, right? And um, <laughs> that, I, my attitude was if in any role that you do, if you're going to do nudity, this would be it. Because it's ease. And for some reason I'm thinking if you weren't, then it's not real, right? As an actor, you're always wanting to be your character to be as real as possible. So it wasn't difficult for me to do it in, in that particular case at all because it justified it. And I think that that is the key with any, with nudity in general. If the role justifies it and if it helps you believe the character, then go for it. And, you know, sure, there it's titillating as well uh, for the audience, but at the same time, I think it's how you do it, like how you perform that makes it, you know, boop. I don't know, sometimes it, it sometimes, it, it, I'd rather do it in a film like that and have it be make sense than do a film where it suddenly comes out of the blue and you're like, and it, it was obviously gratuitous. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I didn't have a problem with it. Oh, that's uh, in fact, I, I actually have a funny story. We were shooting one of the films. When we did The Garden of Eden, we shot it in a arboretum in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And we were shooting the scenes and we would have robes on. And when we went to do the scene, we would like take the robe, the robe off and, you know, we would do our scenes. And Roger mm -hmm. was so nice because if I had, whatever I had to go naked, he did, he did the same. So he was like very respectful of that role. Um, so anyway, we're doing our scenes and there's cameras everywhere. And in the distance, we see people coming to the park, like, you know, a lovely little family with a grandmother walking in the park. <laughs> in the distance, and you can see them just walking, and then they freeze, and they stop, and they're looking in our direction, and then oh. we're, you know, we're shooting the scene, we're keeping going, and then we see them, like, scuttle away, and it was so funny. It was just like, I guess they didn't say, you know, oh, there are people shooting there, or you, they, you know, they didn't let them know what was something was going on, but I could imagine them going home to their families going, oh, my God. Oh, wow. So, 
Well, you looked extraordinary in the movie overall. Thank you. Uh, Robert. I have to say, it, it, it's nice to, to be able to uh, uh, look back and go, you know what? I All that working out paid off, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Robert Morley played God in the movie. Did you have any interaction with him offset? Oh, yes, that's right. Robert Morley was wonderful. Um, I didn't have a lot of uh, scenes with him, um, but he was um, just, again, everyone just so, I think it's just working with people who are British. They're just so uh, well-mannered and lovely and just, they, they're just, in, and I guess, and also, like, they love, their jobs. They love acting as well. So we really bond in the world, the creative world. So, um, and they love Michael. I think, I, I think he worked with Michael Anderson before. Um, mm-hmm. Personally, I am a fan of Logan's run. And so that, when I realized yeah. that Michael um, Anderson had did Logan's run and worked with Sarah Fawcett, I was just like, ah, I loved that. I mean, it was so exciting. And Michael came to me and he said, you know, he said to me, oh my goodness, when you're on screen, you so remind me of Elizabeth Taylor. He worked with like all these Natalie, um, Natalie Wood, and he worked with all these major beauties. And he said to me, "You remind me of, of Elizabeth Taylor. Like on screen, you just shine, you know." And it was just so lovely for him to say that. And uh, I think as an actress, you don't know. You know, we we act with so many different people, but somehow when someone works with someone else and you get that compliment, it's it sort of transcends time, and yeah. and you sort of find your place in the world. You know, I just I, I I have had some very very special and lovely moments in my life as an actress. Oh. That was one of them. Just compared to to her, that's amazing. So uh, yes, it was it was amazing. Um, another funny part about that film was I when I played the gangster's girlfriend, mm-hmm. I had to uh, they wanted to put me in a blonde wig. And so I, I put the blonde wig on, and they had, um, but they had to dye my eyebrows blonde. So I looked completely different. And what was very funny was how everybody, uh, inclu- well, Michael as well, but everyone on the set treated me completely different as a blonde. Blonde hair, blue, blonde eyebrows. I was treated <laughs> like I didn't have a brain in my head, which was really funny. Like, or, or they would come up and they'd say, do you, do you need anything? Do you want anything? Like, that wasn't happening when I had dark hair. Um, I think it was more, I was treated more like I was sexy or, or, or I was treated more, I was um, brainy. So mm-hmm. it was very interesting experiencing that as a total blonde. Uh, they just, everyone was just very, uh, treated me like I didn't know anything or, you, you, could, you, could I help you with this? You, well, you can't pull that chair up by yourself. Let me do it for you, honey. Like, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> so um, I would say that was a, kind of a surprise, too. Wow. Yeah, Logan's Run is probably my favorite uh, Michael Anderson movie because it was just, it came out just before Star Wars, and so it's got kind of a old timey Buck Rogers kind of a, a feel to it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's something about I think there was a lack there was like a weren't there moments of silence in Logan's Run, which yeah. I loved. Like I, I don't think there was a score to the whole movie, and I, for some reason there's moments where you just it feels so real, and I just love that about that film. Yeah, it's got a very optim- it's got a very optimistic ending too. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just I mean, what a cool life he had. He just had a great life. But I was so sad because I really actually wanted to meet him again in our lives. Like I really I wanted to interview him and like talk with him. Mm-hmm. It was very sad when he passed away because it was like I don't know. Sometimes you feel like everyone's going to be here forever. Right, you know, yeah. you just like I can call the whenever. I mean, like even Bill Paxton, you know, it's like, oh, we're going to work together someday again. And what, you know, how is that even possible? Um, you know, <laughs> right now, like there's so many people like I would love to work with that I'm thinking, <gasps> like, we have to work together because you just don't know. You just don't know when things happen. I would love to work with John Cusack again. I'm hoping to work with Keanu next year if that works. If, if I wind up getting into Bill and Ted's again. Um, just yeah. to have those moments, I think, would be, it's not just, obviously, for me, but, like, I, I think audiences would really appreciate it as well. Absolutely. You know, 
because uh, there's a sense of familiar familiarity, you know, with the um, actors. And I mean, even um, Amityville Murders, I actually do wind up uh, doing a scene with Bert. And I mean, it's wonderful. Like, people are going to go crazy when they see it. Um, that film is going to make people from who know that my first Amityville, or even if you don't, if you watch the first the Amityville 2 and yeah. then you see Amityville Murders, you're going to go crazy because there's so many lovely things that are called back and wonderful. I mean, it's great. I, I had, I, my heart goes to, went to that film and it was, it was wonderful. So I'm really hoping, uh, I can't wait for it to come out. And I'm just, again, like, again, it was a blessing to work with Bert. He's a sweetheart and I adore him. I love him. And, um, it was just great to be on set with him again, <laughs> you know, joking. And yeah. Really fun. Yeah. It sounds like that was quite, that was quite a bit of fun there. I was, I'm looking through, um, Michael Anderson's filmography one thing that's really intriguing to me, just before he directed Around the World in 80 Days, he directed the original version of George Orwell's 1984. <gasps> that's right. Oh, my gosh, yes. In fact, that, I think I remember hearing that. That mm -hmm. is amazing. That is amazing. I mean, think about that. What a, what a realm of films he did. I mean... To see all the different films he did, it's, it's quite amazing. And working with the actors he did, yeah. crazy. Just such famous actors. Oh yeah, he worked. With, oh, he worked with everybody. Another favorite one of mine is um, all the fine young cannibals with Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner. I think that's where mm -hmm. they. I think that's where they met, actually. Yeah, that's who was telling you. We're with Natalie Wood. Um, I have some photos of us together and at a certain point I'll, I'll post them or maybe I'll even send them to you to post uh, with your, you know, interview. Just um, so much fun. Such a, so wonderful. But yeah, oh my gosh, that's so interesting. Uh, when, uh, does it say when, um, uh, when did he make his first film? I, does, do you have a record of that or do you know? Oh, his very, year? his very first film? Yeah. Yeah, in 1949 he directed a movie called Private Angelou.
languages. So you have to kind of get the tone and understand what they want, and then you just, you know, go to the highest level of what you do. Certainly, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, you're taking me down memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he was. He was Academy Award nominated for Around the World in 80 Days, and he had a Golden Globe nomination for it too. Got it. Okay, so he was nominated. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Oh wow! And he also di- just, yeah. he also yeah. he also directed that uh, that that bad Jaws rip off Orca. Oh yeah! Oh, that's <laughs> funny. I remember that, right? Orca. Yeah. Wow. Who was in that? Do you know? Did it say who was in that? Yeah, Richard Harris. Hmm. He's the star of it. Well, you yeah, know, so and then you know the movies are very very different. I mean, around the world, maybe they're so different than you know. Second time lucky, right? It's different than Bogan's run. He's like a wide range. But I think the, the main thing that I would say about Michael is that he always had a sense of, he had a sense of humor and perhaps always brought a, little, a bit of optimism to everything he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I know in, um, he also partly, I think, wrote Second Time Lucky, uh, which I think sort of his, He's definitely his sense of humor was in there. So yeah. uh, I don't know how, you know, I remember I just, uh, within the last few years, I did a Q- Q&A or I did like a special feature right. uh, with the producer and Tony uh, Ganane, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, we sat and we, we went through the whole film again. And it was just a, like, it was funny that his sense of humor came through so many times. I was like, oh my gosh, this is body. Is that body sense of humor here, right? <laughs> uh, so um, it's funny. It's funny. I just I would be interested if people saw the film, who their favorite character was that I played, and what their favorite part of the film was they liked the most. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was I was reading about a month ago that um, you have a movie uh, coming out called Wally Got Wasted. Yes, uh, actually, I just went to. To the premiere, and um, Wally I Wasted is, is, I mean, first of all, it's so amazing to be an actress and be working again at, at my age, where a lot of times projects don't come up, um, and it's harder for women to get roles, but I think what happened was there were a lot of people that remembered me, and thank goodness for videos and internet that we can watch films again, and so yeah. that brings people to remember you, and and so when I put stuff out there and I said, oh, I'm, I'm into acting, and that'd be cool, then all of a sudden they contact me. So same thing here happened with Wally Got Wasted. Because Wally Got Wasted is a, a comedy, and the guy who uh, directed it, um, actually the guy who yeah, directed and uh, started it, his name is Adam Ward, we had worked previously before, but he called me and he said, oh, I want you to save a day in April, like a, a couple of days, because we're going to shoot this scene. And uh, it's a cameo, and I'd love you to do it. And I thought, oh, this is fun, because I'd love to do a comedy, because I've done, like, Amityville, and I've done Waking Nightmare. And all these things haven't come out, even the final interview, um, a lot of horror stuff. So I thought, oh, good, let's do a part in the comedy. Right. So um, I shot it, and, and it's very funny, and it, we just saw the screening of it. And so I think they're trying to find, um, you know, where it will be distributed. Mm. I don't know if it'll be in the theaters, but I have a feeling it'll be either an Amazon or Netflix or something like that. So uh, people will get to see it, which will be funny. So you'll like my character. <laughs> I will <laughs> definitely, you will definitely remember my part in the film for sure. <laughs> well, that's good. I did see the trailer, and you know I love raunchy comedy, so I think I'm gonna love this movie. Yeah, you will. You will totally love it. It's really fun. It is very much like a. It's sort of uh, like a weekend at Bernie's. Yep. Me, you know, the hangover. The hangover, yeah. Yeah, I'm a business, yeah. That's exactly Um, what I thought as I was watching the trailer. Yeah. So it's really fun. And then the final interview, actually, is going to be interesting because I, even though they played it, um, there was a screening in Pittsburgh last year. Mm -hmm. They just did the color correction and the sound editing and it is amazing it's such a great film and i what i love about this film and why i 
you know, I see it as an art film is mm-hmm. because it's not following any of the rules. It is coming from a place where today we everything is being said to us visually, and it is, you really uh, have to use your imagination when you watch this film. And it's fun. Like, I mean, it, the film isn't fun, but it is fun as a audience member. Mm-hmm. It's so refreshing to watch a film that causes you to think and visualize. It's like reading a book, right? When you read a book, we visualize. And so it's a different kind of film. And I love it. I just love this film. And I think it's going to do really well when it comes out. I think people are, it, I don't know if it'll, if they're going to try to get into theaters, but I think it's a great film to buy because you'll watch it again and again because it, you'll want to have that experience. It's not like something where you've seen it and you're done. It's like, Mm-hmm. We'll watch it and you'll say, oh, what, did I get this? Did I get that? So kinda, I, I think it's going to be very, very popular. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. It's a thriller. It's a thriller. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing all these movies. One I really want to see, though, is Waking Nightmare, because you work with uh, <gasps> Jameson Newlander and David Naughton. Yes, and I'm uh, Shelley Regner, who is in Pitch Perfect, one of the uh, Bellas. And she was, we had a blast shooting that film. She, she was wonderful with my daughter. Uh, we had a blast. She was such a good actress. She's such a good actress. It was really fun. And Jameson is so funny. I mean, in the film, we play it very straight, but he's a funny guy, and he plays it right on the nose. And, it, I mean, his character is just, we complement each other really well, and it, it really, really... Uh, fun, fun film. So I really can't wait to see it too because again, I play a character that you've never seen me play. This is something totally different and people are going to go crazy. They're going to lose it. <laughs> They're going to lose it. Because <laughs> all these roles, you've never, I've never played these kind of characters and they are juicy. They are so juicy. So ah, I can't wait. I can't wait for you guys to all see it. Oh, that's going to be great. Yeah. Oh God, it's so awesome. Well, well Diane. Yeah, sorry, you know, I wish I wish I had more details on things I try to find out, you know, what's going on. I know Amityville will be released before the end of the year. And I know uh, that the final interview will be, they're going to do something with it this year. But I don't know exactly what. And Waking Nightmare, I don't know what's going on. I've tried to contact the director. Um, He works on the projects as well, so they might be, you know, doing more projects and uh, holding on to it. Maybe they're waiting for Amityville to come out. I don't know. And then um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, and then well, I got ways. We'll see. Um, I have a feeling that'll be on Netflix or something like that sooner. Awesome. Well, we'll well, I'll be keeping track on Facebook and everything, and finding out when they um, are coming out, and have you back on and talk about them more when when you know the secret uh, will will be can be revealed. You know. <laughs> right. Yes. Exactly. We'll have a lot to talk about then. Uh, I feel that it's so wonderful for um, audiences. I mean, not everybody is a big maybe 80s fan, mm-hmm. but it is a, a part of um, our history, and if you watch a lot of the 80s films, you'll get a sense of, you know, what it was like living during that time. It was very different than now, very different. And, yeah. you know, those, you know, teenage uh, sex comedies, that kind of thing, you know, there's some people may go, oh, I don't want to watch that. But on the other hand, there's a sense of freedom, and we can watch whatever we want. So I don't know. It's just interesting. It's, I think watching those films bring people to a place. I, I don't know about you, but as you go back and you go, oh, I remember those days when it was more um, relaxed in certain ways. Or it brings back memories of your youth and your childhood. So oh, yes. uh, I don't know. I hope that the audience gets to see a lot of these films and enjoys them. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I love I love the '80s movies. That's why I started this this podcast. I just I watch them and I get kind of teary eyed in certain places in certain movies because I remember. Oh really? Way, yeah, because of the way things used to be back then. Everything was so simple. There was no internet. There was uh-huh. no digital age. It was just so simple back then, and I just miss it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there was a more interaction between obviously between people. There was a more, there was an intimacy that happened because you couldn't go, you couldn't talk to people all over, which I think, you know, 
mean, it's great. It's awesome. We can you can have a friend in, you know, New England, in England, and you can have a friend in Africa, and you can have a friend in South America, and it's like awesome. Um, and I like that, but there was something about, you know, just having you and your friends hanging out, and, we, and they were your friends because they were with you, and they spent, that, you know, that time with you, and I don't know, just it was, it's a different, it was a simpler time, I think, right? And, and a very upbeat time, very upbeat. Mm-hmm. The 80s were an upbeat generation, uh, upbeat music, anything goes, fun, um, and that's not to say there aren't fun things today, but I think there's a lot of uh, heaviness in the world now, and... I guess I was to say thank goodness we have entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness at least there's a place to um, get your energy, regroup, and then go out again because, um, wow, there's some, every day there's something new going on. <laughs> yeah. It shocks you. It's v- so. very unpredictable, I have to say. Mm-hmm. Well, Diane, I just love talking to you, and um, I'll let you know when we can do this again. And I'm just so okay, I'm so happy that your career is booming again. I can't tell you how happy I am. Oh, thank you. I, I knock on wood for me. Hopefully, you know, maybe it will lead to even more things. I don't ever count on it, mm-hmm. but I but I would love I love it to I love maybe these two and, and um, I feel like, I don't know, be on a show or, you know, do some, or even do a film that's got sci-fi in it or just like, I'd love to do Star Trek just, or something that's like, something that's never, I've never done before. But regardless, I'd love to, um, I, I just think I still have a lot to offer. So, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, I'm open to it, but I don't, into, you know, I don't count on it. I just go, whatever's meant to be, will be. Yes, Absolutely, you'll get there, Diane. I really know. I really know you will. And you know what? It matters because I would say, with fans like you and friends like you and, and all the people who are listening, you know, to, to have this experience as an actress. And I started working like with those, you know, ten, and to bring people with me along for this ride is a gift. I just I feel like grateful, and I would love to have. You know, people go, yeah, I remember her there, and now we see her here. It's almost like, I don't know, it's just it's great with, in the way that, you know, we can carry memories on, and, and you know that I'm a, I'm a good person, and I, I like to bring happiness to people. So hopefully I'll be able to do that with entertainment as well. Oh, you are a crown jewel of a person, Diane. I th- thank oh, you so you. much, and you have yourself a good you night. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. You too. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Have a great day. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Well, there you have it. Diane Franklin. Ain't she a sweetheart as always? Thank you so much, Diane. That was great reminiscing about Michael Anderson and Second Time Lucky and your new projects, which you can't reveal all of at the moment, but pretty soon you will. Um, If you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks.